Yo tech people, if you are into really serious creation, it is time to switch over to this lads. It doesn't matter if you are into AMD or Intel, this ASUS ProArt motherboards may be a lot better than your gaming motherboards. But how so? And if you are wondering, no, I am not sponsored by ASUS to do this video. Okay, so before I go on to the whole creator versus gaming motherboard debate, let's take a look at these new ProArt boards. These boards are in a way distinctively different to your gaming motherboards. First up, Pro Art boards tend to be almost entirely all black with some gold trimmings. They emphasize a professional design with little to no gaming design elements that you find on your gaming motherboards. That means no flashy rainbow ASUS logos, no high-end LED screens, and no pixel art splashed all over the board. You get my point. And a quick interrupt here, ASUS also sometimes includes interesting stuff in their ProArt packages. There's a ProArt labeled accessories pouch in the Z890 and a cool design ruler on the X870E to match the ruler on the board. These are items you don't usually find in your standard gaming motherboards. Anyway, I digress. Besides the professional looks on these boards, what's the actual appeal behind these ProArt boards? Well, I have to include a disclaimer here. This is just my personal opinion. The X870E ProArt and Z890 ProArt with their two PCIe 5 slots may be the same family as the Crosshair and Maximus for AMD and Intel respectively, but in terms of their prices, they seem to fall more in line with the ROG Strix lineup, something like the X870E-E, which I recently reviewed, and the counterpart Z890-E. The X870E ProArt costs Singapore $800, X870E E goes for Singapore 899, while the X870E Hero costs 1037 Singapore dollars. Likewise, the Z90 Creator, Singapore $845, Z890 E 899, and the Z90 Hero, a whopping 1129. So, let's throw out the Hero Bots. And doing that, does it make it a lot easier to compare between gaming now against Pro Art Bots? Well, not exactly. At least for connectivity, it used to be the case for the last gen X670E and Z790 motherboards. Let's use the Z790-E for example. The number of USB ports are similar to the ProArt. You have USB Type-C with fast charging and the usual USB Type-A and 2.0 ports. But the magic lies at the back. The Z790-E only had one Type-C 20GB, one Type-C 10GB and a few Type-A ports. If you needed more ports like Thunderbolt, that's where the ProArt boards come in. A video editor who runs multiple monitors that uses Thunderbolt will benefit greatly from the ProArt motherboards. ProArt motherboards also feature a display in port, which is useful for people like artists and designers who use tablets. However, with the introduction of x 70 e and Z890, the gap is kind of blurred. Both gaming and ProArt motherboards feature two Thunderbolt 5 or two USB 4 for Intel and AMD respectively. Apologies, I have made a mistake on the Intel boards. The Z890 Pro Art features two Thunderbolt 5 and one Thunderbolt 4, while the Z890-E comes with two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So, you will be hard pressed to choose between these two camps. And traditionally, people get Pro Art boards because they want to have more storage. Previous gen Pro Art boards at that price range tend to have more M.2 slots than gaming motherboards. Creators who need to move a lot of footage quickly do appreciate the high number of M.2 slots on ProArt boards. But on X670E and Z90, the number of M.2 slots between gaming and ProArt is pretty similar. Well, the silver lining here is that ProArt boards, as mentioned earlier, are more affordable than gaming motherboards. And somehow, there seems to be more PCI lanes on ProArt motherboards. There is still halving when it populates certain M.2 or PCI slots, but at least, there is no issue of disabled slots. And likewise, ProArt boards give you the opportunity to use two GPUs without having the need to spend a lot more money on a high-end Crosshair and Maximus boards. If your work demands a lot of graphical processing power or a lot of VRAM, you can do so with the ProArt boards. And besides that, the main strong feature of ProArt boards is still the inclusion of dual Ethernet ports on the back I.O. Specifically, the big 10G and the standard 2.5G LAN. The 10G is especially useful if you have a file server such as a NAS and you want to access and transfer files quickly to and from your PC to the NAS. However, we see an upgrade to a 5G LAN port on the X870E-E. There is no dual LAN yet. However, I have a feeling we'll see 10G on future boards. And one more thing, if you still need a COM port for older monitors or devices, ProArt boards do come with one. I don't think there's any on the Crosshair boards, 
So the next tier you need to look at if you want to comport are the Threadripper boards. And also, there's like an entire ecosystem just for pro art. There are high-end pro monitors, graphic cards, and even a CPU cooler which I have also reviewed. You'll be able to build a very cool all-black pro art PC with dedicated software just for pro art. And you also have a free trial of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so after all of this, are pro art boards still worth it? I say as a creator myself, yes, if and when I need the features on a pro art board. I'm somewhat a lighter creator, someone who just uses Photoshop or WG Resolve for YouTube and advertisements, so I'm still okay with a gaming motherboard. However, if you're a much heavier creator and want features such as dual LAN, two full-length PCI 5.0 slots, a lot more connectivity in some way, you can do look at the ProArt boards without having the need to break the bank. The distinctive look of the ProArt boards, as I mentioned earlier, is that it's all black and there's very little crazy design on the ProArt boards. If you are into such a design, the ProArt boards definitely look a lot better than the gaming motherboards with their ARGB accents and very funky LED panels. And if you're wondering, yes, you can game on a ProArt board because as a creator, sometimes you want to play games, so a ProArt board can be used for creation as well as gaming at the same time. But can you create on a ProArt board? Yes, you also can. However, don't get the ProArt motherboard just for gaming. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And you can save the extra money buying a motherboard that's lower than the ones in the Strix lineup. Okay, so I hope that I have managed to cover most of the points between a gaming motherboard as well as a ProArt motherboard. The decision to get either a gaming or a ProArt board lies with you. I hopefully my points will give you a good understanding between a ProArt versus a gaming motherboard. So like if you like this video, write down in the comments if you are using a ProArt motherboard or are planning to buy one. And catch you in the next video.